Welcome, everyone. It is I, Mike V. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the worst bets that you can make while you're at the casino. Now, this is a companion video to my previous video I recently released that, that discusses the best games to play at the casino. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the inverse. We're going to take a look at which ones you should avoid. All right, so for this video, I have listed five games and bets, all of which here listed will have a high house edge. Uh, the criteria to make this list is over a 10% house edge or the inverse being under a 90% return to player or payback percentage. Uh, all of these games, for the most part, will be likely to be found in at your local casino. And all of these are certainly in Vegas when you do visit. And for each one of these, I will provide alternative games or bets in that game that you can make that will improve your chances of winning considerably. So without further ado, let's begin. First one we're going to take a look at is Live Kino. So Live Kino is, is Kino where you actually... Pick the numbers on a sh on a uh, sheet of paper. Give it to a, a kino runner, or at the or at the kino booth, and the numbers are picked physically. So you you basically you could sit down at a kino lounge, or you could choose the numbers at a restaurant. <laughs> so this is was very common in North, northern Nevada. You could still find them in some places. Uh, so you pick between one to twenty numbers out of a possible eighty. 20 numbers are picked at random, and wins are based on the corresponding pay table for the number of picks you chose and how much you've matched. The house edge is really high on this game. 25% uh, or more, or a payback percentage of 75% or less. And 25% uh, house edge is for just picking one number. And then it goes down from there. Uh, all the way down to, I think, close to... What is it, a 40% house edge for picking 15 or 20 numbers? Maybe even worse. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, Live Kino has a really high house edge. Alternative games to play would be Video Kino. However, even then, that's, uh, that's pr pretty bad compared to other potential games that you could play, for example. Video Kino's house edge is certainly better, 7 to 13% or a Payback percentage roughly range between 87 and 93 percent. Still not great, but certainly better than live Kino. Uh, one important caveat, though, for video Kino is that the speed is much quicker. So if you are going to be playing video Kino, definitely make smaller bets. Uh, better yet, there are other better games if you like this type of uh, of, uh, of of gaming. Switch to roulette, for example. This will be another suggestion. Uh, the double zero house edge is 5.26%, or the in, or inversely, a, a payback percentage of 94.74%. It is also a simple luck-based game where you pick numbers. Uh, although, if you pick more than one, of course, you are hedging. Uh, so the over the overall win when you do hit any number will be less, you know, relative to your total bet. So that, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, one game that I did not list here on this slide that I should mention as well is uh, uh, Bingo. That'll be another option that you could play. It's it's also at a relatively slow place, a slow pace rather, just like Live Kino. So that's another option there, and certainly a much better chance of winning there and a lower house advantage. All right, the next bet we're going to take a look at that you should avoid uh, comes from Bakura: the tie bet and the pair bets. So these are side bets uh, that you will see on many Baccarat tables. The tie bet is pretty much on every single table that that's out there, and you know, you're basically uh, you're basically betting on a tie on both the player and banker hands that they are equal at the end of the hand, and it pays eight to one. Uh, some tables will also have a have a player pair and a banker pair bet. Uh, they pay eleven to one when you uh, when the first two cards on either hand make a pair so if you're betting on player pair and you and and the first two cards are both sixes then that then that bet wins uh, the house edge on the tie is 
quite high, 14.36%, or a payback percentage of 85.64%. On either pair bet, it's 10.36% house edge, payback percentage of 89.64%. So what's your suggestion here? We'll stick to just betting on either the player or the banker. Those house edges are really low, you know, 1.26% or less, roughly, depending on which one you which one you're betting on. So just stick to just player or banker, avoid the tie, avoid the pair bets, never make, or any other side bet rather, never make the side bets. I did add an interesting little uh, little uh, fun fact here rather, is that unless you can successfully beat them with card counting. Uh, so when I was doing uh, research for this video, just co just to confirm the what the pay payoffs and the house edges were for the tie and the pair bets, I did come across an article about counting uh, the pair bets and that it is uh, possible to do so in very specific cir circumstances so that would be something for the adventurous uh, skilled gambler to mm -hmm. <laughs> to contemplate if they so choose but for the vast majority of players here which is you know my audience here it, i would recommend just avoiding any side bets on bakura the tie and the and the player and banker pair all right, the next group of bets to avoid are at the craps table. All of the bets in the center, all center bets. So we have a large list here. We have the hard ways. We have uh, the horn bets, the craps 2, 3, 12, the O11, the any craps bet, and the any 7 bet. So for those of you who are not familiar with the game of craps, uh, what a hard way is, is basically a doubles. So a hard way six is three, three. So a six rolled specifically as double threes. A hard eight is double fours. A hard four is double twos. And a hard 10 is double fives. And the reason why these all have a high house edge, as you can see, ranging anywhere from 9.09% .09 for the hard way six or eight up to 16.67% house edge for the any seven bet. And the reason why isn't just because they're hard to hit. They are hard to hit, many of these. So the reason is because the payoff when you do hit them is r r low or rather not enough to justify making these bets. And the house takes a bigger cut as a result. Like, for example, if the payoff were slightly higher for any of these then it then it starts to become a a competitive bet to make for example if you want to bet exactly on snake eyes a craps two for example it pays 30 to one on most craps tables and that is a, a house edge of 13.89 percent or a payback percentage of 86.11 percent if it increased by a couple of, of units for example if it paid 32 to one instead you would be looking at a more competitive uh, and much lower house edge in comparison. And if that was the case, then it wouldn't have appeared on this list. But as it stands, uh, you should avoid all the bets in the center. So what's the suggestion here? Well, stick to the pass line, the don't pass, the come, the don't come, and back those bets with the free odds. Those are the best bets you can make on the craps table. Craps is still a great game to play. It is a fun game. So just keep in mind, just know what you should bet. I didn't list it here on this uh, slide, but place bets on the six and eight are also pr pretty good too if you want to bet on numbers specifically. Uh, th those are fine as well. Next game on this list is uh, not a game you'll typically see much these days unless you're on the strip, and that is the big six wheel, especially the original big six wheel if, if you don't know what that is that is the vertical wheel that you'll see at the, at the entrances of some casinos especially in vegas and, you know it has the dollar amounts uh, on on the layout so you could bet on the one dollar space the two dollar the five dollar the ten dollar the twenty dollar space and then a logo and a joker space and so the it's pretty simple you bet on, say, the $20 space and the wheel lands on the $20 wedge, you get paid at 20 to 1. So the payoff is basically what the number is. So if you bet on the $1 space, which is the most common number to, to appear, of course, on the wheel, and it lands on the 1, you get paid at even money. On 2, you get paid 2 to 1, and etc. 
The house edge ranges from 11.11% on the $1 bed all the way up to 24.07% on the logo and joker space. That translates to a payback percentage of anywhere between 75.93% and 88.89%. So that, that, and given the fast pace of this game, typically avoid it. Now, some suggestions if this is a type of game you really like. I'm not sure if you can find it in the U.S., but if you can find a version with the Australian rules or payouts, that will improve your chances significantly, and the house only has a 7.69% house edge on all bets. Uh, more commonly, if you could still find a casino with them, I remember seeing these quite a bit a number of years back, is the Aruz or Interblock version. So this is a more electronic version of the Big Six wheel uh, that spins by itself. Uh, these have a much more competitive house edge. Uh, the range is 3.7% for most bets, uh, with one of them being a 9.26%. That is the $6 space. So just avoid that space and you'll be f perfectly fine. And the third alternative suggestion here is to play this at an online casino. Uh, so if you, if, if it is available at an online casino, more likely if you're outside the U.S., uh, there are much fun, more fun versions of this vertical wheel variant uh, with better payouts and relatively lower house edges. I'm not going to give any examples here, but, uh, but if you're going to be playing this type of game, uh, playing it online will certainly be uh, better for your odds if you if you are the type of person who does play online, of course. And now, finally, the last game we're going to be discussing here uh, that I consider to be uh, one of the worst bets to make. Now, I had a difficulty trying to decide how to explain this one because many reputable gaming writers will probably categorize categorize all slot machines as bad to play and given that that is the favorite type of game for pretty much most gamblers uh, that's probably going to uh, give, bring a little few few of you guys upset but I have to put it on this list somehow because it is true if you look at, at the payback percentages uh, for some slots I would say it, it does get into the point where it is it can be quite bad so I decided to just put a specific category of slots on this list, and I decided that it would be the penny slots. So the background here. So in case in case you haven't known, um, payback percentages for slot machines are quite wide um, from my research. It could be anywhere. The lowest, I think, that has been confirmed to be somewhere in the low 80s to mid 80s so i'd say 83 percent all the way up to 98 percent and i think some a few online slots may even top up at 99 percent even but for land-based ones 98 uh, it can be configured as high as 98 for, as from what i've seen and typically speaking casinos would uh traditionally set higher payback percentages for higher denominations. And because the penny denomination is the lowest ever, I mean, one cent is one cent, uh, then that's going to have the lowest payback percentages. And it's almost always going to be in the 80% range in most casinos. So I estimate that penny slots will range between 83 to no more than 90%. Maybe some markets it goes up to 92 uh, but this is just an estimate and, and my personal opinion here. And not to mention, penny games are going to have high volatility too, uh, which will hurt your bankroll even in the short term. Not, not to mention the long term, of course, with the high house edge. So for the slot player, what should you do? And I understand penny games can be quite fun. So I would, if you're if you're just playing for entertainment anyway, just keep it to a minimum. But if you're a slot player and you still want to play slots, um, one suggestion I have is to play only simple games and play at a higher denomination, assuming you have the budget to do so. This will usually be the three reelers, though there, are, there might be some video slots that are, relatively speaking, lower in denomination. Usually they're simple games as well, So almost always it's going to be the three reelers. Alternatively, you can play at an online casino. Slots are much more competitive there with a, a lower expense to maintain. 
So the payback percentages are almost always higher for pretty much all games at an online casino. Uh, for example, I, uh, from my experience, the average across all online slots that I have looked at the game rules for, and you can actually find them in in most uh, online slots from reputable slot makers. Uh, the average is about 95%, give or take. A third alternative here would be to switch to video poker. Video poker is a much better game to play than any slot, but especially penny slots. And if you study the version of video poker that you enjoy the most and you learn the strategy, you can get a payback percentage much higher. Um, mo the lowest... Payback percentage for video poker, in my experience, is around 94%, and it can go up to definitely over 99%, with the highest currently in existence as of making this video is that full-pay joker poker machine at the Plaza in downtown Vegas. Payback percentage with perfect play is 100.65%. All right, so that is it. That is my video on the worst bets that you can make at the casino. So this is based on payback percentage or house edge. Now, there could be games that, that would make a list like this, though I only, uh, I only considered the ones that were above a 10% house edge uh, for this list. You could argue some games should be on a list like this. It is quite subjective. You know, For example, one might argue that triple zero roulette should be on a list like this. Over 7% house edge. It's an abomination in my opinion too. I agree. <laughs> uh, but I've only included a few things here. So let me know what you think. What are some bets they, that casino players should avoid? If you want to add to this list, if you got an opinion to make, or if you disagree with me, you can go ahead and put it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, you learned something new, do me a favor and hit the like button. I definitely appreciate it. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Share this video with others and hit the bell icon to be notified once I release a brand new video. Until then, I'll see you for the next casino gambling tutorial. Have a great rest of your day and go make it happen.